Welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha! Welcome back to the Pearl Harbor Attack. Before we jump into God's Word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. Lord, many years ago, on December 7th, 1941, an attack happened and many lost their lives. Lord, we uh, thank you for the sacrifice they made for our country and for what came afterward in ensuring uh, that America was protected and we thank you for all of our uh, military forces uh, that protect us, that sacrifice their lives. But Lord, most importantly, we thank you for sacrificing your own for all of us, Lord. And I pray for our military that they would come to accept you as their personal Savior. And I pray that anybody out there watching today uh, would accept you as their personal Savior and have a relationship with you. I pray that you'd speak through me this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you saw at the beginning of this video, uh, I'm going to try to start posting the questions instead of waiting until the end of the video and reading them out loud. I'm going to post them for you so you can read them. That might uh, help you. I've got a suggestion from a few people about trying it that way. And so still trying things out. You know, we're still doing it. But ultimately, no matter if I post the questions that way or read them at the end, ultimately, this is about your relationship with God. All right. So... Uh, like I said, December 7th, this is the anniversary. This is going to be my last message talking about Pearl Harbor. Tomorrow, we're going to jump into Christmas messages, all right? So be ready to join me for that. Uh, go ahead, open up your Bibles. Again, we're going to talk about one verse today. Open them up to the book of Philippians chapter number one. Philippians chapter number one. I want to read you something here. It's on my phone. I don't usually use my phone or anything like that, but I do want to read you a little something. And uh, if you ever get the chance to visit Pearl Harbor, this is actually a plaque that they made at Pearl Harbor. And so you can find this there, but I'm going to read this out loud to you. Uh, the date for this letter is November 30th, 1941. All right. Dear loved ones, keep on praying and trusting that the Japanese situation won't interfere with what we have planned. It doesn't look so good right now, and we are on the alert. Meanwhile, I've addressed and mailed quite a number of Christmas cards. It doesn't seem possible that it can be a little less than a month until the churches will be singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and folks will be wishing one another Merry Christmas. Better not start until you get word that I'm actually coming. Much love from your old sweetheart, Tom. All right, the Tom that they're talking about there is Captain Thomas L. Kirkpatrick, and he was the chaplain aboard the USS Arizona. And he had sent this letter to his family, again, like I said, November 30th, 1941. December 7th, 1941, uh, the morning, chaplain and also captain uh, Thomas Kirkpatrick. If you don't know what a chaplain is, is basically like a pastor for the ship. All right. So it's somebody that can give them spiritual guidance is someone that can read the Bible to them, someone that can preach messages. He can even perform weddings and funerals. That's what a chaplain does. Okay. So uh, that morning he had gotten up. He was talking with a few of the crew. He was drinking some coffee and then boom. The attack from Pearl Harbor happened, and Chaplain Thomas Kirkpatrick was killed that morning. He's actually the very first U.S. chaplain to give his life in World War II. So I actually uh, read that letter from one of my visits to Pearl Harbor, and I started thinking about this guy, Thomas Kirkpatrick. I was like, well, I wonder what he was like. So I searched a little bit of him on the internet and found out there's actually a book written by his son about him. And so I ordered the book. I read the book. I really enjoyed it. And the book talks about four things, four relationships that he has, right? It talks about his relationship with his wife. It talks about his relationship with his son. It talks about his relationship with the military because he joined. 
And most importantly, it talks about his relationship with God. And that's what I want to talk to you about here. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Uh, I, I always thought, what did the family and friends, how did they react receiving Thomas's Christmas cards after he had passed away? Right, Because they had to have gotten word about the attack, and then they're wondering, did he live? Did he die? They, they get word that he's passed away, and then his Christmas cards come in. I always wonder, how, what was their reaction? Was it... I mean, I'm sure they cried. There's no doubt about that. I'm sure that tears were rolling. But were they also rejoicing that he's in heaven? That he had gained? Because from, like, I, obviously I did not know this man, but from reading his book and hearing some of the testimony throughout the book about his son writing about him and interviewing others and things like that, from what I can gather, he was definitely a Christian. He lived for... Two things. He lived for his country, serving in the military, and he lived for Christ. But while in the military, he was serving Christ. He was doing that as the chaplain. And so having a book written about him, it still pointed people to God. And I'm sure he did that while he was on the ship. Again, I'm just that's just my humble opinion. And, you know, December 7th, 1941, a lot of people died that day, uh, including... Uh, Captain uh, Thomas Kirkpatrick, but I wonder how many of them are in heaven and how many of them are in hell? How many of them were, they just joined the military because it was something to do. They just wanted to make money. Uh, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the military. I just don't know people's motives or anything like that. But it is a, a scary thing to think that a loved one, someone that you know and love, if they were to die today, and you think, you have that question, oh, were they a Christian? Are they in heaven? Are they in hell? Because we don't know which Christmas will be our last. In just the past month, I've heard of three people that my wife and I know that have passed away. But we believe and we are confident that all three are in heaven. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my wife's mind. We have no question about them. But they don't get to spend Christmas with their families and their loved ones this year. Their last Christmas was last year. And maybe you have a family member that you had Christmas with last year, but you don't have them around this year. And, and, and I'm sorry for that. It is, it's hard. It's a struggle. There's no doubt about that. Christmas comes whether we want it to or not, right? And sometimes the holiday can be awesome and it's cheerful, and sometimes it brings a little bit of sadness. But we have to remember what Christmas is truly about, and that is Jesus Christ. We can still worship Him. We can still love Him. We can still honor Him. We can still live for Him through joy or tragedy. If you want to know more about Har Pearl Harbor, you live on Oahu, you can go visit it, right? You, get, you got the internet, you can look it up. There's books, there's documentaries, all sorts of things. I'm not going to go uh, beyond this message on Pearl Harbor. But I did want to just talk about those few. You know, we talked about Jacob DeShazer. We talked about Mitsuo Fujita. Now we're talking about Thomas Kirkpatrick. And I believe all of them have uh, gone home to be with the Lord. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please do, do so today. If you have more questions about that, send me a message through text message, email, Instagram, whatever way that you have my contact info. Uh, please message me, or if you don't have my contact info, comment down below and we can try and uh, exchange information and go from there. I want you to know, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He wants you to live for Him. And if you have accepted Christ, but you have friends and family that haven't, don't let them go any more Christmases without Jesus Christ, all right? So again, like I mentioned before, the questions are at the beginning. I've typed those out. We love you. God loves you even more. Make sure to join us tomorrow as we talk about Christmas messages and what the Bible has to say about the true meaning of Christmas. All right? We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.